Hi, great to see you again. I want to share a wonderful tool. I teach a course at Harvard. It's 100% online. It's flipped. And I have students in my class that are undergraduate students, that are graduate students, and that are non-credit students. That means I have a huge variety of learners in my class, just like you do. And so one of the things that we did was to create something called bundles. And these bundles are very personalized lists of reading or videos or podcasts that we use so that students can begin looking at a topic from their own starting point. What we're going to do in this workshop is we're going to talk about how gaps occur in knowledge, you know, how it is that sometimes if a kid is missing just one little piece of some core concept or basic information, they cannot go on to build those higher order thinking notions that are so important. So we'll pull apart the idea of constructivism and neuroconstructivism, how it is that your brain sort of builds off of lower or base level knowledge to get to higher order concepts, and how does knowing the sub elements, for example, of math, math is not just something in the brain, right? There are multiple sub elements and neural networks that need to be primed before somebody does arithmetic well. What are those? How does that work? And how do we structure that? And how could the structuring of more personalized tools for those kids improve the possibility that all of them learn well? This will tie into some concepts that you're already fully aware of, for example, like mastery learning as opposed to just, you know, passing a standard. But what does it mean to really no addition, for example, or understand 10th grade chemistry or whatever it is, right? Um, how have we decided what does that really mean? What do those learning trajectories look like? And how can we help kids first understand where they are at their starting points? And then how do they build up towards that mastery learning over time by filling in those gaps and notions that they might have? This leads to something that you often do in classes. Differentiating learning and differentiating evaluation is really important. Now, this means that fair isn't always equal. And I would like to debate this point with you. You know, what would it mean if you changed the evaluation criteria you have with different kids? Would it make a difference in whether or not kids end up being successful in your class or not? You know, what are the ethical implications? Is it fair? And if it is fair, and it's not equal, is that still okay? So we're going to talk about those points when we get together during the workshop. This will also lead to a better understanding of what do we mean by inclusive classrooms. You know, inclusion doesn't mean like having everybody in the class but putting the slow kids in that corner. That's not inclusion, right? So how do we do that? And what are the pedagogical benefits of integrating different level learners into your classroom setting? And this becomes an even bigger question when we talk about all of the different types of challenges or cognitive challenges that different learners might have in your class, kids with different levels of English language dominance, or if they have dyslexia or attention problems, Asperger's, what does that mean and how can we offer different types of supports to those individuals through the, the way we manage activities in the class, but also the resources that we provide for them. So we're going to look at all of this through this vision of universal design for learning. What does it mean to construct classrooms that provide for every learner. It does not mean creating a totally different learning plan for each kid. It does mean that we're able to vary the resources and the paths that the kids can take towards dominating the information, towards reaching mastery. So we'll talk about how do you get to mastery learning. First of all, how you define mastery learning within your subject area. How then do you create the resources that feed into that? And we'll give you the specific example of using um, bundles. How do we choose the types of resources that the kids will be exposed to? And this includes a better understanding of the brain. And to do this, I'm going to ask you a simple question. How many times do you need to see a new concept before you know it? The answer in education is always. It depends. <laughs> it depends on what you already know. If you already know, for example, if you already know how to add, I can teach you how to subtract in more or less uh, 10 different steps. Uh, I'll expose it to you. I'll give you an opportunity to try it. You get corrected. You can redo that about 10 times. The average person would probably get it because they have a strong foundation of addition. But what would happen if you have a weak foundation in addition, and now I want to go on to subtraction, now how many times would you need to rehearse it? This is the whole idea behind using things like flipping um, or using video content to help rehearse. 
and to provide for each kid what they need. So this doesn't mean forcing everybody to do 50 repetitions of you know, addition or subtraction in order to demonstrate their mastery. It means giving each kid what they need. Maybe one kid. This one guy is so fast that all he needed to do was see it once and he figured it out. Because he's had a lot of prior experience of the core fundamental concepts. But what happens if the other kid has gaps in prior knowledge and he needs to see the information 40 or 50 times? Can we create, can we design experiences in our class that provide for each of those kids? That's going to be the focus of this workshop. So I look forward to seeing you. If you have any questions before we start, please go ahead and write me an email. Otherwise, I look forward to working with you and talking about bundles, mastery design, and universal design for learning. Thanks.